Good morning, everybody. So good to see you all. Um, today, we're going to give a little bit of background on the last five years of etcd. As Liz mentioned, it's the consensus database that powers Kubernetes and many other projects. And we also have some exciting news to share about the project as well. Uh, I'm Brandon Phillips, CTO of CoreOS formerly and currently member of technical staff at Red Hat. Uh, this is Xiang Li. He was formerly engineering manager at CoreOS, uh, founding engineer of etcd and senior staff at Alibaba Cloud. All right, so first I want to say hello to etcd. Um, how many of you ever use etcd directly, not in relation to Kubernetes? All right, all right, all right. Um, so etcd, very simple. You can download it really quick on your laptop, run it, you can store keys into it, and then later retrieve the keys. Very important attribute of a database, get stuff back out. And um, this is how you interact with it uh, from the command line. And the important property of etcd is that it's replicated. It's consistent and partition tolerant, and it uses this algorithm called wrap. And so a etcd cluster looks something like this. You have three to five members, and they're homogenous, meaning that there's really no like, difference in the attributes of the, the members in the cluster. And then the fancy property is that there's automatic leader election, so that if one or two of these machines that are running etcd fails in the cluster, you can continue to read and write to the database as you'd expect. And then obviously it's the database used by Kubernetes, and so you can use, if you use etcd CTL, you can see things that you might be familiar with if you use Kubernetes inside of the database. Now, we built etcd five years ago to solve this particular problem that we had at CoreOS, which is uh, we were seeing this view of servers as something that would automatically update themselves. And obviously, you don't want to automatically update all your servers at once. Uh, that would cause downtime, you'd be upset. And so we needed something that could hold on to an atomic mutex and uh, make sure not too many machines were rebooting at once. And so you do something like this, where every time a machine wanted to reboot, it asked for permission, and then something would stop you from rebooting too many machines. And that's what we built etcd for. <clears throat> and it started, like all good things, with a readme. We wanted to build something that was simple, secure, fast, reliable, and persistent. And Alex Polvey, uh, Shung, and myself wrote down this readme like all good startups in a Palo Alto garage somewhere. And uh, so just to reiterate, etcd is a database. It's replicated. It's open source. We built it Apache 2 using the Go language. And it has a lot of stars on GitHub, most important metric of any software project. <laughs> it's not testing, everybody. It's not language selection, it's stars. And uh, the project has been brought to this point so far by a huge amount of effort from this uh, top level maintainership team. And so I want to give them a quick round of applause. <laughs> and then the news I'd like to share is that etcd is being contributed to the CNCF today. Uh, the pull request merged. <laughs> And this will ensure neutral governance of the domains and IP of the project moving forward. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to Xiong to give a background on what we've accomplished in the last five years. Thanks, Brennan. Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about the SCD development journey of the five years. So in the past five years, over 400 contributors have checked in more than 14,000 commits into the project. Together, we made more than 115 releases with three major ones, SCD Alpha, SCD 2, and SCD 3. So SCD Alpha is our first release with the goal of being the cloud-native distributed consensus system. It provides a standard HTTP RESTful API, which is very easy to integrate with and to interact with. To be cloud-native, SCD supports dynamic reconfiguration, which allow users to add remove or replace node easily in cloud environments. In this release, we got a few early adopters, including Cloud Foundry, Kubernetes, and later on, Flyno. So a year and a half later, we released SE2, 
with the goal of being solid. So ICD is one of the first system to adopt RAPT in production, a consensus system originally developed at Stanford. So RAPT is designed to be easy to understand and simple to implement. However, implementing RAPT reliably, efficiently, and in for production system is still hard enough. So after many attempts and discussions, we realized that we have to rebuild the core of ICD's RAPT implementation from scratch. We need a much more careful design to enable deterministic behavior and rigorous testing. So with this goal in mind, we created ICD RAPT, a new core for ICD. So now ICD RAPT has become one of the most feature-rich and reliable distributed consensus algorithm implementations. So it powers many popular production systems like PyKV, DGraph, CocoRachDB, and Hyperledger, and many more. So ICD3 is our current release, which focuses on efficiency, reliability, and usability. So a new storage backend is developed for ICD3 to support incremental snapshot, which allow users to store millions of key into ICD efficiently and reliably. Multi-version concurrency control and transactions are also introduced into this release to simplify application development. So remote snapshot is also added for disaster recovery and for backup. So the team is working on new exciting features like learner, provote, proxy to further enhance SAD's reliability and usability. So ICD community has been a very active adopter and promoter of cloud native technologies. So in 2014, we started to use Prometheus for Matrix. In 2015, we moved our API to gRPC and we have contributed many bug fixes and feature enhancements to the gRPC community. In 2016, ICD team created the first operator, ICD operator, and we started to promote the concept of operator now, Operator has become one of the most popular way to extend Kubernetes and to build Kubernetes native applications. So, Kubernetes is a major user of SAD and we have been working very closely with the Kubernetes community and the two products benefited from each other. The so list and watch feature from SAD influenced the design of Kubernetes and the Kubernetes requirement for SAD, especially around scalability, observability, reliability, pushed SAD development forward. Actually, a few ICD maintainers are also Kubernetes maintainers, so we'll continue to see a bright future of the collaboration between the two products. Besides Kubernetes, many other cloud-native technologies have adopted ICD. For example, M3, a distributed time series database from Uber, uses ICD for service discovery and for metadata management. Vitus, a MySQL solution from YouTube, uses ICD to manage its topology. And many companies are running ICD in production today. Nearly all cloud providers are running ICD for their infrastructure and for their user-facing products. For example, at Alibaba, it runs ICD for the internal cloud manager, Sigma. On AliCloud, it runs ICD for the cloud container services. So five years is not long for an infrastructure software, and ICD has achieved so much for its first five years. And as a community, we are proud that the product has benefited so many users and developers. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Brandon again, and he will talk about the SAD future in CNCF. Okay, thanks, Xiang. <laughs> so with the CNCF support, some of the things that we look forward to going into next year is having some sponsorship for our test and dev cloud services. We, we do a lot of testing on etcd, and this is a pretty important way that we ensure it's so rock solid. Uh, there's a lot of interesting war stories that we've written blog posts about. Uh, Discovery.etcd.io is used as a bootstrapping service and uh, getting a, a more robust on-call system for that. And then some things we've been wanting to do and we're looking forward to do in the next year is a third-party security audit and a third-party correctness audit. Uh, building a distributed system is really difficult. We've done the best that we can with our own team, and having somebody with zero uh, understanding of the internals of the system will help build some confidence. All right, so I wanted to have a few advertisements at the end if you want to learn more. We have an intro to etcd course Tuesday, uh, today at 11.40 a.m. 
We have a debugging at CD at 2.35 p.m. We have a roadmap session at 1.45 p.m. And finally, a deep dive Thursday at 10.50 a.m. Please check out these sessions. Uh, there's something for everyone, depending on your skill level. And thank you. Thank you.